Hey Leo, welcome to your 2020 Sidereal Astrology Forecast. So this video is for Sidereal Astrology. If you are new to this form of astrology, be sure to check out the link down below for more information. We are using the actual size of the constellations, which does change the signs from mainstream. If you're a Leo in mainstream, you may not be in Sidereal. So do check the link down below if you're new. Uh, down there as well is a birth chart calculator where you can find out exactly your sun, moon, and ascendant Sidereal signs. Um, I do recommend these videos for the ascendant sign. So if you do know your time of birth, uh, do use that calculator and that'll give you a more specific picture. But if you do want a more um, you know, holistic picture, I would watch all three, uh, but I think the ascendant is usually the most accurate. All right, so Leo, we're going to take a look here at the most important aspects um, and sign changes that we have going on this year. Uh, we'll look at the outer planets, what are the aspects they're forming, and the eclipses as well to give a good idea. This is meant for a general overview, um, but you should find um, this important for specific months where things could be shifting um, in these major themes. So the major theme for you here in 2020 is on your fifth house of self-expression. It is your house. Um, it's the house of creativity. It's the house of our passions, of kids, if you have kids in your life, of romance. It's the area of um, anything that is essentially really close to our hearts that we're really passionate about. Also small businesses, speculation, um, just things we're passionate about. So um, there's been a lot more serious energy here in this sector for the past uh, two years. And this has been Saturn really helping you refine this area. So it's been really good as it is still this year to, in this case, this year, maybe finalize doing some work with um, your self-expression or these passions um, in some way. Working within your limitations, seeing the long road, the patient road with this stuff. Again, nothing new, just really solidifying here. And this is a huge contrast from the last couple of years because expansive Jupiter is coming into the sector here in 2020. So not only we have contracting Saturn here helping you build it, but Jupiter is going to help you see a more broadened perspective of it. So all year good to look at your self-expression sector, your passions from a bunch of different angles. And um, this is going to help you maybe see some opportunities. And again, really build upon them with Saturn with this combination of yin and yang. Very constructive for manifestation in this uh, creative, passionate, self-expressive um, you know, sector. Now, January, we do have a lunar eclipse on January 10th, and this is going to be in your 11th house. So while there's a lot of development here in the passion sector, the nodes are going to help you balance that out. And in this case, with the 11th house, which deals more with the future ideals and also community things, collective matters. In other words, where can you take some of these passions and give them to something larger than yourself or contribute to something larger than yourself or cultivate your future ideals that, you know, that outlet of passion can really be expressed through. So around uh, January 10th, just do a status check with your future ideals, with anything collective or community based or even technologically based. Um, and this is going to help you um, really adjust the area because for this uh, first half of the year in particular, it's going to be really good to implement um, any shifts of awareness that you do gain here around how you can, again, implement these future ideals and possibly collective matters this year. So on January 12th, we have Saturn and Pluto conjoining in that fifth house of yours. So where there has been a lot of these transformations and changes with your self-expression or your passions, now Saturn's going to help you lay some new foundations with this. So it's definitely this restructuring that's taking place. I would say it's a really good month to practice non-attachment um, to your passions, to the things close to your heart, to the people close to your heart, um, to then allow for the changes. Because when we are non-attached, um, then we're able to allow those changes to unfold more. We're more open to them. And then in the wake of what might end or we might release, um, Saturn's going to help build some new foundations. And then for the rest of the year, it is really good, again, for that constructive approach to building um, your long-term passions and uh, your self-expression or your creative things, whatever it might be there with that. Now, in February, we have Jupiter sextiling Neptune. Nothing major with this one, but a bit of good synergy here between that self-expression sector and some of your relationship sector. 
Um, you've had Neptune here since 2010 in your relationship sector. So there may have been some maybe uncertainties or ideals or dreams around the one-on-one -on -one sector, um, but this is now in really good harmony. So with whatever is developing with your passion, your self-expression, this is um, synergizing very well with your relationship sector for pretty much the whole year from February 20th all the way through about October 12th and with July 27th being the kind of halfway point that um, things could shift with that in a step in the right direction with that uh, synergy there. Now in March, we have Saturn dipping into Capricorn between March and June to give a bit of, bit of a prelude as to what Saturn and Capricorn will be like from 2021 and 2022. And for you, this is your sixth house of routine, of work, and also of your physical health. So Saturn, for these few months, March, March through June, good to get a little bit of this uh, constructive approach and discipline to be implemented into your work or routines. Um, there could be some limitations you become aware of with these things, but it is about working within those limitations and really building upon um, your habits, you know, your day-to-day -day activities, your health, you know, to really build a good solid foundation with um, your personal development and your overall day-to-day well-being. Now, April, we have Neptune dipping into Pisces, which is actually a very good placement for Neptune and domicile there and a very comfortable sign. And so this is going to be April through September, and this is involving your eighth house. So where things may have been uncertain or nebulous in regards to your relationship sector, like I said, maybe as far back as 2010, uh, this starts to slowly clear up now uh, this year. Um, mostly once you get to 21 and onwards, but here between April and September, you do get this kind of lift off, uh, you know, lifting off of any deep water energy with relationship. And you might actually start to see that everything's kind of happened in divine timing and you're exactly where you need to be spiritually. And you can be more accepting now uh, in regards to the sector of really being attuned to uh, your relationships in a more receptive way. But Neptune's going to go into your eighth house. So 2021 and onwards, um, and again, maybe between April and September, a good time to maybe start to dive deep with some deeper things in life of what you can surrender that's outside of your control about death or about your deeper values. Um, there might be some things regarding um, inheritance or other people's money or resources from others that might get a little bit of that uncertainty, but maybe even some ideals and, and some serendipitous stuff is, with it as well. But most importantly, it is about finding peace with the deeper aspects of life. So healing, transformation, life and death, uh, really good to explore this stuff on a spiritual level and see if we can have more of that accepting nature about these things, which again then helps us align to this actually very good placement of Neptune and Pisces. Now, also in April, Jupiter's then going to go over Pluto, and that's going to go from April 4th until about November 12th. And so, again, this will be in your self-expression sector. So, again, really good for cultivating that and your passions. But in this case, maybe becoming aware of your deeper maybe fears or uncertainties or doubts, um, anything you can do to really dive deep with your psyche and do some shadow work in regards to your self-expression or your relationship to your passions in life. Um, and this can end up becoming very, very constructive. Jupiter has a way of really illuminating things, helping us see some opportunities. There could even be some opportunities for some transformation and empowerment to express yourself in a more non-attached, powerful way. Maybe, you know, spend time with your passions in life. Things like this, really good to develop. June 30th, between that uh, April and, and November, uh, there might be a bit of a shift and pivot so you can further develop that stuff as well during that time. All right, but June, we do have a solar eclipse in Gemini on June 21st. And so um, this is going to be a new beginning in your 11th house, which deals with your future ideals and sometimes community or collective matters. So um, another new beginning here. And I think it's good to just see what arises during this time regarding future stuff or community stuff and be flexible with it because we do have a lot of retrogrades at this time, the month and a half before it, Venus will be retrograde. Mercury will be retrograde during that eclipse in June and then even the couple weeks after it. So be flexible, but do know that the second half of 2020, really good for developing anything new with this um, future ideals. Again, your passions, your self-expression need an outlet and the um, 11th house is that outlet and has to do with what we can contribute to, has to do with our own future hopes and wishes 
and uh, sometimes community things that um, we can cultivate so that we do find that balance between our passions and what the world needs and what our communities need and what our future needs. Now, September, that's when Neptune will be coming back into that seventh house of relationships until February of 2021. And so again, maybe finalizing some things there of having that more accepting and receptive approach to your relationships, uh, which again is finalizing, being developed. And once you get into 2021 onward, like I said, the relationship sector will start to clear up and um, you know, there will be this more um, you know, practical understanding of it and anything that's been behind the scenes will probably come to the surface. Um, and it is about fundamentally though, where now you do have this greater accepting nature to your relationships, which is beautiful. And September through February is a great time for that more accepting and receptive uh, approach to that part of your life. Now, November, we have a lunar eclipse, and this is gonna be in your 10th house of career, and this is where the nodes really start to shift here. So November 30th, good time to do a status check with your career sector, achievements, um, and your public life, if that applies to you. And just see how things are going. There might even be some things culminating or harvesting uh, in regards to that sector. But most importantly, do a status check. How's your achievement life going? And how can you further develop it going into 2021? Uh, could be a really good way of working with the later part of the year. Now in December, on December 14th is when we have the solar eclipse. That's gonna be in your home sector of the fourth house. So there could be something karmically coming up for some resolution um, regarding your home life or the past or family and sometimes our physical bodies like our health. Um, so good to just be aware of what arises and by just simply doing that, by being aware of it, we can notice that there are some things being released. Again, things from the past, karmically or whatever, come for some resolution. Karma doesn't mean bad stuff, just stuff that's going to be resolved from the past or past life that could be coming up regarding the home or personal life sector that, again, it's something to do, do with as much as it's just to be aware of and accept and allow that releasing, which can actually be a very healing thing, in fact, with a fucus being in your fourth house. And lastly, we have that Saturn-Jupiter conjoining. So like I said, very constructive year for your self-expression, passions, your relationship with your kids, um, romance in your life, um, anything that's on this passionate level for you. And at the end of the year, this conjunction really solidifies things. Uh, maybe some opportunities get grounded and solidified. Maybe we start to see some inspirations or potentials that, again, are staying nice and grounded and for the long term here. And again, with Saturn leaving this sector, anything you could be finalizing in regarding what you've been expressing or creating or spending time with um, here, really, uh, you know, finalizing and completing for the end of the year. All right, so Leo, this concludes the 2020 forecast. Now, if you would like a personal reading looking at your unique chart, do check out the link down below for a 20% discount that applies to both the MP3 recorded readings as well as the live Skype sessions if you'd like one of those. But I wish you all the best 2020. Thank you so much for all of your support, and I'll see you all in the next daily video. Take care.